Hey guys, this is Jaybird from UGX Mods, and we're going to be doing another tutorial today, and this is going to be uh, dealing with patches. So, the first thing that we're actually going to be going over is curve patches versus terrain patches, and how we can implement those. The second thing I'm going to be going over today is primitives, which will include bevels, cylinders, square cylinders, and cones, and how you can use those to add detail to your map. And the last thing I'll go over is just some techniques that I use while dealing with patches as well as like some of the uses for them. Alright guys, let's get started. Alright guys, so we're in Radiant now and we're back in our test map. So what we're going to do is just going to go over uh, really quickly. Uh, the, so this is basically some stuff that I did with uh, some patchwork and whatnot. So you can see some curves and whatnot going on. But I'm going to just really quickly go over how to create uh, curve patches and terrain patches really quickly. So uh, if you create a brush, you go to patch, curve, simple curve patch. You can select how many uh, vertices you can select from. So I'm going to go by three by three. That's typically what I do with a curve patch. And that's what default is set. So it's going to convert it into a patch here, which is a 2D plane. And then what I can do is click V to go into vertex edit mode. And you can see all the vertices are here and they typically alternate between green and pink. And you can left click drag to box select a bunch of vertices or just one vertice in particular and you can hold alt and then left click drag to move it so you can see that even if I like just select a whole row here I could actually go and drag that off and then click R to rotate and then just kind of rotate it and I can start making almost like a road going through here so you can kind of get like a, a road shape going on Kind of play around with the vertices a bit to get it more of a curved shape but you know uh, so that's a curved patch not too much going on there if you want it to be less or more detailed another uh, shortcut you can use is holding shift and the square braces so left square brace is going to reduce the amount of vertices and right square brace is going to increase the amount of vertices so you know somewhere around here or there is pretty good depending on what you're going for so that's a curve uh curve patch so we can do the same thing create a brush, go patch, simple terrain patch. So it's always going to do from the direction that you're you're looking at in the 2D grid here. So you notice how it's a plane going this way. If I was at the side there, it would have created a small little plane going along the side. So we can go in here. I did a two by two terrain patch, but this time uh, terrain patches don't curve. You notice how like if I dragged off the corner, it was kind of creating vertices to arch uh, between the two vertices. This is more of like a direct one-to-one. -one. So if I move a vertice, it can kind of go wherever I place it. And then what I can do is say I wanted more vertices in between here. What I can do is I want a row to be in between these two vertices to come along here. So I'll select these two with the box select. I'll hold control shift A and then I'll pop in a what's called a loop cut right here. So we have a loop right in between the two. So I can do that on this side as well. Like I could select here and here and get one to go right down the middle. If I want to select a loop cut, I can hold shift and then left click. So you can see it selected all along there. If I select it again, it's going to do this side. So it'll just alternate between the two. And I can do that anywhere really. So like you can see it's selected all along here or I can click it one more time. It'll go along here and it'll go back. So that's a neat little loop cut select trick. If I want to get rid of a loop, I can hold Control Shift and Q. So I have this selected. Control Shift Q is going to get rid of it. So I can do the same with this one, and we're back to where we begin. So I could really quickly just like start adding some uh, vertices in here. You know, start playing around with it. Uh, get another loop going, and it's like, oh well, maybe I didn't want this loop. I can get rid of that. And then another trick is. I could actually split along a loop as well. So if I have this entire loop selected, I can do Control Shift X, and that's gonna, you notice how this line just got a bit thicker? That's because if I deselect everything and then reselect one, it's now split into two separate patches now. So now if you have two patches and you wanna join them into one patch, if all the vertices along the connecting faces are identically lined up so like these are both together these are both together and these are both together you could uh, uh, go back out of vertex mode select the two and then click W and it will join them back together say you wanted to connect them 
but they were kind of like all over the place. The vertices are kind of like, oh, this one's over here, this one's over here, whatever. And it's like, oh, well, I want these two to join, but I don't know how to connect the two. You select one, whatever one you want it to merge towards. So I'm gonna select this one because I want this one to get dragged over to there. Then I'm gonna select this one. Then I'm gonna click V. I'm gonna select this vertice and this vertice, and I'm gonna hit W, and that's gonna merge it to there. The same button that we did to merge the patches together. This is called welding. So I'm gonna weld this vertice to this one. So I selected those two, I hit W. Now you notice there's still two separate patches because you have to get out of vertex mode uh, by clicking V and then hit W and we're back to one patch again. And then if you click S, you can get the surface inspector. You notice the texture is a little wonky. You can hit light map, might make it a little better. You know, play around with the settings in here. You can rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, another trick is if you want to shift the texture around just slightly, you can hold alt and right click and drag and you can kind of drag it around, which is a neat little trick. Okay, so that's our little introduction to patches. So we're going to move on to the primitives. So a primitive is something like a cylinder or a square cylinder. So I actually created this little parking blocker thing. You see these in park parking lots all the time. So what I actually ended up doing was I created a, I started off by creating a brush and then I'm just going to texture it a cock texture and then I'm going to go uh, patch primitives cylinder. So you'll notice this cylinder is actually a lot more round than the one that I just generated. What I can do is hold shift and the right square brace like we did with the curve patches and this will act exactly like a curve patch. So if I go into vertex mode, you'll notice I got a loop here, I've got a loop here, and I got a loop here. So I can do the same loop select thing. So if I do one, it's gonna do these corners here. Or if I do it again, it's gonna select that loop. So that's shift left click for the loop select, remember. And so I can kind of like play around with that. You know, I can rotate and move it around. But yeah, so that's kind of how I got into uh, getting this sort of shape going on. So if I texture it like that, bumped up the vertices, I kind of got this going. So then you're probably wondering, okay, how do you do the dome? So what I ended up doing here for the dome was I just copy and paste the top or I copy and paste the, the cylinder. And then I just kind of like, cause then it can keep the dimensions here. So I'm going to go to the top view. And I'm going to go uh, to patch primitives cone. So obviously that doesn't look the same. So we're going to go into the vertex uh, mode here and I'm going to select this loop, the middle loop, and I'm going to drag it up to that one vertice that was at the top, the converging point. Then I'm going to select all the points, including that center point and bring it back down a bit. And then I'm going to increase the vertices a bit. So shift and right square brace. And there we go. We got a cap. So say you wanted it more of a flatter cap, you could just drag this down or uh, you want it, maybe you wanted it to have a sharper edge to it. So why don't we try and actually do the cap tool. So we'll have this selected and do shift C. That's gonna cap both ends. Um, I'm not gonna have the bottom one visible. So I'm gonna just deselect these and delete the bottom one. Uh, I'm gonna have to bump up the vertices so that it's matching with this. And I could even grab this center vertice here and drag it up and maybe get a little bit of roundness going, but not too much. So you can see it's got like a harsh, sharp edge, but a little bit of curve to it still. So neat little trick there. The bottom is the same idea, just some cylinders that I uh, did. So I'm just gonna cheat, copy and paste those. And I did the same idea as this cap for here. So shift C, I'm gonna delete the bottom one. And then we're gonna increase the vertices. Uh, this is shift square brace, like usual. I'm gonna middle mouse to copy that texture. And voila, we got that going on. And this is the same idea, just another patch, another cylinder patch that I kind of just spread out along the ground and put a dirt texture. So that's kind of how I did that little blocker there. The bolts here are just models, really. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So we have a wire. So the wire is actually made up of a bunch of different cylinders. So I started off with this base cylinder that I just laid out on the ground. And I like to use it as my base because it doesn't have any uh, rotation to any of it and it's locked onto the grid so it's easy to work with. So I copy and pasted this and I moved it over to the edge, lined it up, and then I went into vertex mode and I rotated the vertices slightly to get this little curve going. And if you take your time, you can kind of just step through and just make little 
little bits of curves and attach them together and then you can get a nice looking wire going. So I'm going to really quickly just show you. So let's say I started off with just my little cylinder. I'm going to copy and paste it off. I'm going to line it up. I'm going to go into vertex mode by clicking V. R to rotate and I'm going to kind of change the grid size here a little bit. Kind of go 90 degrees. Click R to get out of rotate mode. I'm going to hold Alt and drag. And then I'm going to move this one, do the same idea and just kind of shift it off a bit. So there we go. We got a little wire and you can just kind of if you, this kind of took me about maybe five minutes of just playing with it and getting the vertices to line up but if you take your time you can make it look really cool a nice uh, example of what you can do with wires is I just made like a little cylinder here for a telephone pole and I got a couple of them here and I just made one simple wire you can see one loops here the other loop is attached to the other pole and then the center part I just dragged down slightly to make it look like it's hanging so there you go that's a little thing that you can do with wires kind of neat to uh, add some wires to your map to make it look a little less plain. You can add them on walls and whatnot. So another quick tip with terrain patches is you can create little decals on walls. Um, so a quick tip here is you can actually go control shift and then left click to select the face. We've talked about this in a previous tutorial. And then what you can do is go patch terrain and then faces to terrain. So that's going to create a terrain patch where you selected that wall. So if I move this around a bit, you can see the wall is still there, but I got a nice little terrain patch that's literally right on the wall. So I could go in and get a little blood decal, apply that, I can go textures, texture, fit texture, and then maybe rotate it. Now it's not fitted, I gotta fit it again. Oh, okay, we'll just rotate the brush then. <laughs> All right. And there we go. We got a little little blood on the wall. And then, so our last thing that we're going to go over is this little archway. So this actually involves two different things that I did, which was a square cylinder that I eventually converted into a patch, as well as a bevel that I capped off to get this. Because realistically, the wall only contains three brushes and that's it. The rest of it in the center here is all patchwork. So. I'll start off by showing you how I did that. I went in, I created a brush. I Let's go and just create that texture there. We're gonna go patch, primitives, square cylinder. So this is a square shape, like a rectangle, but it acts like a cylinder. You can see it's got the exact same loops there. Uh, same idea, it acts just like a cylinder, except it's in the shape of a rectangle. So what we can do is I'm just gonna kind of use my other one as a guideline right now so I can kind of just line this up here and then drag this down so I actually did this in four parts so I did the vertical here the first part of the arch the second part of the arch and then the last part so we'll go with that and then I'm going to copy and paste this and drag it up line it up and then I'm going to just really quickly go into vertex mode 90 degree turn here and then I'm gonna bring it right to the center. So bring your grid down if you need to, but I always like to keep it on the grid. So I'm not gonna rotate this one because if I wanna get a perfect arch going, I know that if I keep this in line with this one and this one, then this vertice is good. So what I can do is then line this middle one up with this middle one and this middle one, and that should be good as well. So that's about one grid down. And then we wanna line this one up with this vertice and this vertice and voila we got a nice arching curve there that is actually following the grid so then what we can do is just really quickly copy and paste rotate this 180 degrees we'll flip it over to the other side and voila we'll just look at the grid here because if you notice one of these this one in particular is slightly off so what I'm gonna do is snap this edge to the grid. So I'm gonna go down lowest uh, grid size and I'm gonna select that loop, this one right here. Then I'm gonna hold control and click G and that's gonna snap it to the grid. I'm gonna do the same for this one. I'm gonna hold, uh, select this loop. I'm gonna go control and then G and then it's snapped to the grid. So now that's lined up perfectly. Okay, so now you'll notice that if I were to try and fix the texture here and go rotate it 90 degrees, 
it's not lining up. That's not good. So what I ended up doing was I converted these into patches. So you can see, if I select the face, it's selecting the front only. So what I ended up doing was I went, selected one. Actually, I could probably select all of them. I'm not sure if this works or not. We'll see. And I went to curve, curve to terrain. Ha, huh, look at that. It'll convert all of them. Okay, so you can select all of those and go patch, curve to terrain. And then we're going to want to split off the faces. So I'm going to do that splitting tool. So we're going to select a loop along the vertical here. And I'm going to go with control shift X. And I'm going to do that with all the edges. So then we are left with a face on each side. So I'll do that with every single one. I believe that one's already split. And then we'll do it with this one. Oops, I dragged that down. Hopefully that still works. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Split this one. And you'll get used to the shortcuts eventually. It takes some time. Um, but once you have them down, then it works pretty well. And there we go. So they're all split. So we're going to do that merging uh, that we did before with the other patches. So we're going to merge the patches together. So as long as the vertices of the faces are in line with each other, you can merge. So I have these two selected and I'm going to hit W. Ignore the texture mess up for now, but you can see that this is one patch now when I select it. So we'll go and do that with all these. So this whole face, we want to be one patch. So I'm going to hide that by clicking H so I can just go in and really quickly uh, join these all together. I'm going to hide that. We're going to select the back faces. I know you can't really see them, but they're there. We're going to hit W. And then I'm going to hide that. I'm going to select these ones. Ooh, this. What am I selecting? Oh, I'm selecting the pole. This one. This one. And this one. OK, W. I'm going to do Shift H to show my stuff that I was hiding before. So now let's fix the textures. We're going to go in, Surface Inspector. Click S if it's not visible for you. We're going to hit Natural. And then we're going to go 90 degrees. And there you go. That outer one looks really good now. So we're going to do the same thing. Natural, 90 degrees. And you can do that with all of these. Natural, and then 90. And then natural, oops, natural, and then 90. And there we go. We got a little archway going. So that's almost done here. The last thing I want to go over is that bevel that I was showing before. So like I said before, I'm just going to move this off to the side. Uh, like I said before, the wall only consisted of three brushes and the rest of it was patches. So we're going to go really quickly and make that wall. We'll just kind of go like that. We want it to be lined up with the top. And then we're going to bring this off to the other side. And it's lined up with the top. And then we're going to do a little upper part here. So I'm just copying and pasting right now. Really simple. Trying to move pretty quick here because there's a lot to cover with patches. Um, we'll just go with a brick texture. And then you'll notice we have this little you know cutout area that we're gonna have to fill in. So what I'm gonna do is create another brush, which we're gonna convert to a bevel. We're gonna line it up with the bottom of the arch and with the middle right here. And we're gonna go patch. Remember to be facing it in the 2D grid as well. So you wanna be looking right at the face. So patch, primitives, bevel. Okay, so the curve is actually going to fit better with this way, so we'll just drag it over to this side for now. And you'll notice it's following perfectly along our archway. So what we're going to do is do Control shift the cap uh, tool that we did before with the cylinder. But since we're doing a bevel, it's going to pop up with this dialog. So I'm going to do an inverted bevel so that you can see it's all this blue, the blue area is where it's going to go. So that's what we want, is we want it to fill in all of that area. So you'll see we have our little patch filling in there. We can delete the bevel, so I'm going to deselect the other stuff and delete the bevel. I'll select this and middle mouse the texture there so it'll line up perfectly with that. Do it to this side as well, and voila, we have a wall. And I'm just going to copy and paste this to the other side. And if I can just drag that over, middle mouse middle mouse and there we go we got a little archway so that covers everything for the primitives that I'm going to be going over in this tutorial there's some other ones in there uh, there's square bevels end caps square end caps you know there's a few of these you can play around with them yourself 
but these are the ones that I mainly use myself. Uh, the cylinders are really useful for wires and poles and whatnot. Uh, square uh, bevels I find are really good for archways and like square curves and whatnot. And then your bevels are really good for when you want to uh, kind of cap off a wall like this in those sort of scenarios. Alright guys, so that's covered that. And so I'm just really quickly going to go through all of the shortcuts really quickly that we went through and that's going to be the end of the tutorial. So what we did was we created a patch and this is kind of our general thing that we can do. So if we want to add vertices, we can only do that to a terrain patch. We can't do that to a curve patch. So remember to add uh, a loop, all we have to do is control shift A. So that's how we're adding stuff. To remove, it's control shift Q, but you have to have an entire loop selected. If you want to merge vertices, you want to select one vert and then select another one, it's going to merge towards the first. So we click W. If we have two patches that we had selected in vert, uh, vertice mode, it's going to move towards the vertice of the first patch that's selected. So when I click W, it mer uh, merges towards the one that is selected. The same uh, merge button W, if you select two patches and you click W, it will convert into one patch. It usually messes up the texture, so you're going to have to go into the surface inspector by clicking S and then hitting natural or light map, depending on what you're going for. So that will cover those. We can also get rid of the loop cut here if we don't want it, and we get one big patch. And then when it comes to curve patches, we have stuff like cylinders, if I can get one going, cylinders. So this is a pretty big cylinder. I can reduce the uh, vertice count by holding shift and doing left brace, left square brace, or I can increase the count by doing right square brace. So shift, left square, shift, right square. All right, I believe that covers almost everything in this tutorial, and I hope this really helps you guys with like making more details for your maps, and it should be uh, a good use for doing more, more than just the brushes, because brushes and models are what you see in very basic maps. When you see these more detailed maps, uh, they usually contain a lot of patchwork because that's when it can start getting into more intricate looking uh, detail. Alright guys, uh, that's going to be it for this tutorial. We're probably going to be covering uh, actual terrain in the next one, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.